Hello dear students, you are welcome in this video. Dear students, today we are going to talk about the first English novelists. As you all know that we have started a series called History of English Literature. Here you can see that this is hash 42nd video in the same series, History of English Literature. And it is very useful for those students who are preparing for NET and SET examinations, which is coming in this month. Now, dear students, in this video, we are going to cover a few things like rise of the novel. The novel uh, has been started and uh, who were the precursors to uh, this novel or the genre called novel or how it has been developed in English. So, uh, let's start with the rise of the novel. And here, let me recommend you a very useful book called the 18th century novel. And uh, this is the uh, Cambridge introduction to 18th century novel. It's very helpful book if you uh, can get this book please read this book it's very nice to understand the novel in 18th century now let's talk about the rise of the novel if you look at the genre called uh, novel you will understand that it is considered the original contribution of England to the world of letters so this genre is given by England because you find that uh, these novelists have developed the genre called novel in England first and then it spread all over the Europe and uh, when we think about the novel very first thing come to our mind is that uh, is it a good story now this is very important question in the discussion of novel is it a good story you might have listened stories in your childhood the stories told by your grandfathers and grandmothers and then you think that this is the story and the same thing appears in the novel novel is nothing but a story which is based on imagination but it has also some stint of facts or it is uh, it can be based on the facts or real life events in the same way is it a good story is the first question when we think about a novel it's uh, from the uh, general perspective that is it a good story and after that you find that how much imagination is used in that novel or how much imagination does it use now imagination is an important part of any novel or any fiction or any story or short story now here you find that it uses imagination but imagination in a different way uh, because William J. Long uh, thinks that it is not only imagination but the imagination and intellect combined and then forms the novel and hence we find that there are uh, genres uh, like romances here he, it is the rough categorization or classification or stories you see that our simply stories novels romances adventure stories or simply stories is a classification of the genre called fiction or novel now first let's understand and what is Roma, uh, romances or adventure stories and then we will consider the novel and here you see that romances is nothing but here uh, we have an opinion of William J. Long I quote here you see that the romance is originally a work of fiction in which the imagination is given full play without being limited by facts or pro probabilities now you understand very clearly that romance is the original work of fiction it is nothing but the fictitious or fiction is there in the romance and it is based on the imagination so there is full play of imagination you see that full play of imagination and less use of facts or probabilities means these are the adventure stories in which you find a lot of imagination and they are far from the facts they are far from the real life events so different kind of events are uh, portrayed in the romances and romances are generally adventures or adventure stories and it is not really, uh, limited to facts or probabilities and hence the very features of this romance you see that uh, it includes extraordinary events and it has superhuman and supernatural elements in the romances and in novel you find opposite to it or these elements are used but on a very less scale and the use of these elements is the basic feature of romances and you see that romances use this supernatural elements or superhuman or extraordinary events exaggerated events or uh, some hero does the exaggerating task or he does the task which is 
beyond the human being the capacity of human being and hence this is you can say that the uh, very features of romance now let's think about uh, the novel here you see uh, before that let me tell you that uh, we have two videos on the same topic first development of the a genre called novel or fiction and in this video we have talked about its beginning history major periods important novelists and their novels and again this second video we have what is novel in this video we discussed about definition and meaning difference between novel and fiction salient features its kinds and famous examples so you can watch these two videos and understand novel in more so again now think about the novel for the novel is a work of fiction in which the imagination and the intellect combine to express life in the form of story now here a few things are important it is also based on imagination but it is combined with intellect so intellect combined to express life in the form of a story now here this word is important life means some kind of events are taken from the real life or this uh, novel can be based on the facts or some events happened in the society and it is hence called that it is combined with intellect so intellect is important part of the novel unlike romances in romances you find full play of imagination where the here imagination is restricted or limited and it is combined with intellect and it expresses the life what happens in the life of a person or in a life of a character in the novel is given here uh, you in the novel now here you can see that it resembles to or based on real life events or facts so this can be the basic feature of novel unlike romances so it is not necessary that the romance can resemble to your real life or it is based on the real life events but it is important then in novel you find real life events or some events happened in the society and based on that events you find same events in the novel next let's understand the precursors of novel now this is what the concept of novel and uh, romances i hope you understood the concept and next we have precursors of the novel means predecessors of the novels or it is very difficult to uh, start the novel or to understand the genre from uh, its beginning because the origin of novel we did not know or when did this novel originate so there is no any fixed point from there you can see that uh, from this point the novel has been started and it is uh, developed in different genres like story or uh, adventures or uh, fiction or novel so it is very uh, difficult to uh, understand from where this novel has begun but we can have uh, some precursors of the novel and here you see that there are three major uh things in the development of the novel or we can understand from there this journal has background or the precursors very first let's understand the greek romances you see here greek romances from second and sixth century or second to sixth century and there we find different types of stories so greek romances can be the base of development of novel because novel is nothing but the form of story and story in different kinds and here you see that uh, there are stories of ideal love adventure for example here uh, we have uh, example from the greek romances it is uh, the very first example the wonderful things beyond kul and uh, ephesica this is the second example now this examples have fine stories of ideal love and adventure and based on that latter in europe or in england the stories or adventure stories or romances developed so we can say that from greek romances we have the origin of stories and then stories developed into full fledged novels in elizabethan and after elizabethan period or in 18th century and again you have uh, it uh, second phase or the second element in the development of novel or we can say that this is the second precursor or predecessor of the genre called novel italian and spanish pastoral romances inspired by 
eclogues now these eclogues were composed by virgil in italy and uh, some uh, there are spanish pastoral romances uh, from 14th and 15th century and this also played important role in the development of story now uh, here we find that stories are developed in different forms and then these forms combined in a form called novel or genre so this is the second thing italian and spanish pastoral romances now pastoral is nothing but the setting is in wild or you can see that the stage, uh, setting is in rural uh, background or in rural areas now third uh, here precursor we can find romances of chivalry in english or in england this developed after the greek romances italian and spanish romances in england romances of chivalry and here you see thomas marlowe's lee morte di arthur is a very famous romance or we can say that it is the uh, pastoral romance again we have some stories in canterbury tales of geoffrey chaucer where you find that uh, this tradition of story is uh, stretched uh, later in this period and some stories in canterbury tales also can be considered as the precursor or predecessor to the modern english novel or uh, 18th century novel now you again have these uh, kind of uh, uh, works uh, mortedy arthur or uh, canterbury tales more practical and with human touch now the element of real life we are searching in the uh, work of novel or in the fiction so here you find that more real touch is given to characters more uh, practical and human touch is bestowed upon the uh, setting or whatever they are presented in the novel or we think that this is the real and then the genre comes forward the genre called novel next uh, you see now here uh, you have uh, thomas marlowe's morte di arthur this is a very uh, famous work in the middle period you can uh, read this work and understand thomas marlowe's lee morte di arthur now again let me tell you that here we have a work called countess of pembroke of arcadia of philip sidney this work also is important in the development of the story and it also is one of the precursor to uh, the novel and uh, let's understand the novel in elizabethan age generally elizabethan is considered from 1558 to 1603 and in elizabethan age we find that the novel has developed on a larger scale or elizabethan age is considered as the golden age of english Uh, literary history and hence we find that novel also has its roots in this elizabethan age and here sidney's arcadia as i have displayed here the very book composed in 1580 it is a pastoral romance of chivalry as uh, we have discussing about the pastoral romances the very setting and characters belong to rural part of the uh, country or rural part of the nation and there you find these pastoral romances happen and one of them is arcadia it is very important work in the english so it is also based on the chivalry or adventure of some knighthood and some uh, we can say that the great characters uh, displayed there in the uh, work next we have bacon's the new atlantis published in 1627 and uh, moore's utopia 1516 it is the studies of social institutions if you look at these two works you will find that neither they are romances or the novels but they come under the category of social studies so these are the social studies francis bacon's the new atlantis and thomas moore's utopia are the social studies but these works also provided the background to the development of novel and from there novel also emerged in a different form so this is the basis in the elizabethan age next in the elizabethan age we have uh, thomas lodge's rosalind this work is very important again in the same period and here we find that it is a romantic story of rosalind now there is a character called rosalind and this is a famous uh, story and it is modeled upon italian novella or short story and later you see that william shakespeare has used this rosalind in his as you like it the story you find the story of as you like it 
is nothing but the story of Rosalind, and he, this is the contribution in the development of novel by Thomas Lodge. In the same period, we find that uh, uh, the introduction of Spanish picaresque novel, which latter became very famous in England. So this picaresque novel also has given the way to English novel. The development of the English novel is. Uh, based on this picaresque novel of Spanish origin. And, and again, in the same period, you find that Thomas Nash's work, The Unfortunate Traveller or The Life of Jack Wilton is significant. And this is nothing but a picaresque novel. As we are discussing picaresque novel, so this is the example of Thomas Nash, Nash's picaresque novel. And it also a forerunner to historical novel. So from this novel, we can say that historical novel also Developed. So different kinds of genres in the novel has been already developing in the Elizabethan age. For example, picaresque novel, historical novel or romance novel or different kind of novel we find. So uh, next we have introduction of uh, this Spanish as we have discussed it already. Uh, you find this is based on the uh, Spanish picaresque novel, this novel. Next you see Puritan age which is considered from 1649 to 1660 and in Puritan age we have development uh, of the novel in this form and here you see that Pilgrim's Progress is a work by John Bunyan and this is basically an allegory but this story also is very moving story and it is later developed in the form we can say that of novel so emphasis is on character what happened in Puritan age you find that there must be some moral in the story so moral purpose is important for Puritan authors and they emphasized on the characters the display of characters or the portrayal of characters and you see that this is the character called Christian in Pilgrim's Progress and Pilgrim's Progress is nothing but an allegory and there you find different kinds of places are introduced symbolically and this is what the moral purpose fulfills this pilgrim's progress and hence the, it has a contribution in the development of novel in puritan age next we have again Bunyan's second work uh, this pilgrim's progress and uh, an allegory and the life of and death of mr badman these two works are very different pilgrim's progress is different and this life on a uh, life and death of badman is again different and this has paved the way for modern novel or modern story or modern fiction we can say simply and this is what the novel has been developed in the different form in the next video we will talk about uh, how oh, this novel leads forward and who were the first novelists which were considered actually it is very difficult to stress out that uh, this person was the first novelist or this author can be called as the first novelist it is very difficult but still we will try to understand uh, who wrote the novels initially and how they were published so this is all about this video that how novel has been developed and who were the precursors to english novel hope you understand if you have any problem any query you can comment below in the comment section i will answer to your comments so let's meet in the next video thank you very much